Good morning, Teach Better family. My name is Katie Miglin, and I am here with the fabulous Ray Hewer. And we just got done with an epic conversation in our admin mastermind. And so we kind of wanted to like recap it and talk through it because I felt like it was it was really powerful. It was uh, kind of a smaller group today, but honestly, it was a good conversation as we kind of transition back into the school year. And so uh, Joshua Stamper is out this week, but he, of course, has always set us up for success by kickstarting the conversation. And he asked a, a pretty heavy question about would you rather be able to accomplish something at a really fast pace, but always be distracted? Or would you rather be able to accomplish things with free of distractions, which kind of opened up this conversation. And unanimously, people just said that like being an admin is kind of filled with distractions, right? Like we can get through things quickly and uh, we're constantly distracted by things and that's okay. But I, what I loved about it is it kind of spiraled into this conversation of like, what are your priorities on the day to day, but also what are your priorities for the school year and how you can continue to hold in your staff. And so I, I would love to kind of talk about that with you, Ray, about some of the ideas that were shared. So Ray, one of the things that um, some people brought up were kind of being open and communicating to your about what goals are. And so what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I love this discussion because it not only highlighted some of the challenges of being an administrator, but also some of the, the things that our crew in our mastermind had done to overcome those struggles. I know you just asked me a very specific question, but I will tell you one of my favorite quotes of this week's conversation was focused on the fact that an administrator's role is extremely reactive, which when that was said, I was like, Ugh, that, that's not what I want. But actually the second part was really enlightening. The second part was, so we have to be preactive in designing our, our procedures to allow us to pull on them when we're being reactive. I know I just said uh, proactive is really, I know what that word is, but the point being that we need to be reactive to the things coming at us and proactive to ensure that we have processes, people, um, delegated systems that we can lean on and pull when those fires come up. So there was some really good conversation this week. Yeah, they. it was interesting to hear like that perspective because you're right. I hadn't really thought of it that way either. In my head, I was like, oh, reactive. We don't necessarily want to be reactive. Yeah. But the conversation was really like, it's inevitable. Like there's going to be things that come up, you know, we're going to be distracted. Things are going to happen. But then what systems do we have in place? What do people in the office space that we share, what do they, everyone know kind of what to do? And someone shared having those systems in place, but also communicating it to all of the people kind of before you, hopefully prevents them from constantly coming to you, right? And, and we see that all the time, especially as administrators are working with either new staff, new office staff, or maybe they're new to their role, being able to say, if this happens or if a parent shows up in the office, here are the steps to take. I don't need to be out of my office taking that call right away and setting up some of those kind of parameters. And so again, it's that it's reacting to the moment, but what do we already have in place so that things can continue to run smooth? One thing so it's not about so it's not about being proactive and necessarily getting your day predicted well enough that you're following it perfectly, but being reactive to the situation and knowing that you have had conversations prior to set people up for success when they're being reactive. I loved that that focus today. Yes, but then it also like the conversation just kind of naturally went into, but then what do we do with our day to make sure that we are setting those goals and meeting the priorities that we kind of want. And someone shared that they have like, you know, post-its on their desk, but they also like live and die by their Google calendar. They share that out with their secretaries and their staff so that everyone's on the same page, but then also being able to come back and like reflect weekly or, you know, even daily or whatever works for you because it's really easy. And Ray, I know you and I have had conversations like this before, but it's easy to like monthly or quarterly to look at, you know, what are our goals and objectives of the school year? But then like, if so much time has passed and you're not actively thinking about it, like what's the point? And so I, I thought it was like, cool how we kind of talked through some of those things of like, 
what are, what are things that we want to keep working on and how do we communicate that beyond ourselves and not just like at the week, you know, the, the meetings that are like those arbitrary dates that we set throughout the year. So I don't know, what were, what were some of your takeaways, I guess, from that conversation? Yeah, you know, there are a lot of good takeaways there to help ourselves stay in line with our priorities. I really loved the focus of not only telling staff what the priorities are, but having things in place to help support us continuing to follow that pathway. Um, I saw some really great head nods and comments in the chat related to you know, prioritizing a list or keeping a reminder post-it in your pocket or hanging it in a few different places so you're able to see it. Um, a few people noted even just putting it on top of, you know, when you, agendas to make sure you're constantly referring back to those goals. I will say with everything that we talked about, while there are a lot of tips and tricks that were shared, I think my favorite focused on delegating with intention I think that's something that we really need to focus on at the end of July. We're heading into August. We know it's inevitable that our to-do list will be an, uh, an insane list and we will be running around our buildings like chickens with our heads cut off, trying to get everything done. We'll be there too late and we'll be arriving way too early all to get ready for these students. And I think it's such a beautiful time of year that adds so much stress the concept of reminding administrators before the chaos hits how to delegate and how to be strategic in delegating, I think was something I will continue to reflect on throughout the day and throughout the week this week. Yeah. So uh, shout out to Dante who kind of shared some ideas, but we talked through like, how do you get to know your staff? And we, you know, we know that there's surveys of, you know, what are your favorite snack foods or favorite soda, all that. But he kind of shared how he taps into their personality strengths and he gives them a personality test. And what I loved about it is it was something that can be done at the beginning of the school year, but that you embed throughout the year. And so he looks at passions and and what people get excited about, but also things that they truly enjoy doing. And then when these needs come up, then he can tap into these people strategically with intention, like you said, so if you have someone that is really interested in, you know, the science and saving the planet, then maybe they run your recycling program because they're not feeling the burden of running it because it's something they truly care about. Mm -hmm. And so it's being able to delegate with that intention in mind, but also getting to know your staff. So to know that like, it's not going to feel like one more thing. And also if we delegate but it is one more thing Then why, why is that? Like, why do we feel the need to give those tasks out? And so I did feel like that conversation really kind of wrapped up nicely of just being mindful of what we are doing, what decisions are we making that involve our staff and communicating with our staff so that we can have a successful school year. So I totally agree that the conversation definitely has me like thinking about different things and, I, and there were several people who were kind of headed back into the buildings. They said staff was kind of starting to come in. So it's a good like transition time. Well, and what I value about this reminder is that we're all planning our days back, right? In April and May, we planned our August Institute, maybe with a vision, a, a general mindset. Maybe we even booked a speaker to come in and provide some inspirational value. Uh, but this is where we're getting into like the nitty gritty. What does the second hour look like? What is the half an hour break, what kind of treats do we want to book to, yeah. to bring into staff? And this is where that personality test, I think, fits in really well. That's an easy 15 minute, half an hour thing that you can do at the beginning of the year. Whether you have new staff or old staff, it's always valuable. Mm -hmm. And the way that we spun it and mastermind that I thought was added a ton of value to the dialogue was even not only in the terms of delegating, but you can also use that information on how you're going to best provide feedback to teachers. And I thought that was another note that not only supports the beginning of the year, but uh, supports us as we continue throughout the year. Is there best ways for certain people to receive feedback, different modalities they very much value, kind of that short and sweet teacher mode? How do we give feedback and how do we make sure our students are receiving it effectively? So there was a lot of conversation here that I, I, I really feel like we're good reminders for August as we are easing into kind of finalizing that Institute schedule with staff. 
Yeah. And in August, we're going to get into uh, kind of maintaining that momentum and kind of maintaining the focus of whatever your goals that you set kind of over the summer, all those things, you know, we was pie in the sky ideas. How do you keep them going when our buildings get filled, the to-do list gets long and the schedules get a little bit more chaotic. And so I'm looking forward to that conversation, especially because August is totally a different month for different people, depending on when they start school. So I'm excited to have different perspectives. I do, I do really love this season because administrators that we are supporting are in such different spots. This is literally the craziest time of the year for about 45 different reasons. It's so exciting. Yeah. It's super fun. It's just fun to like see some of them, you know, are at different phases and stuff. So if you are interested and have um, thought through some of the things that we've talked about and have stuff to contribute to the conversation, we always love seeing our mastermind, admin masterminders in the conversation. But also we're going to challenge you to reach out to an administrator that maybe has not been a part of our group and invite them to be a part of this, even if they just are consuming it and they're not quite ready to dive into the conversation. We would love to see some new faces and we'd love to hear some different perspectives because we know there are a ton of you all over the country and world and we would love for you to be a part of the conversation. So in this next video, you'll see the link to go ahead and sign up, but maybe this time instead of you just signing up, maybe also invite a friend. So we'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.